Hello everyone. My name is Don Pinto and I'm a technical product marketing manager at Red Hat. Today, let me walk you through a quick demo of using Microsoft SQL Server on Red Hat Enterprise Linux using Red Hat Universal Base Image or UBI for short. The first step we're gonna do is we're gonna create a folder to store our SQL scripts to be used by SQL Server. For that, let's use the make directory command. Next, I'm gonna copy an already existing script file into this newly created folder. For that, let's use the copy command. I'm now gonna change ownership of this particular folder to ID 10001. This UID maps to the MS SQL user that SQL Server runs under. So for that, let's use the change ownership command. Next, let's use Podman, which is one of the rel container tools, to take a look at the images that exist on this whole system. As you can see, there is only one image that is available, and this image corresponds to the Apache server image that is currently in my localhost repository. Because this demo is about SQL Server, let's now and go and fetch the SQL Server image using Podman pull. So as you can see on the screen, Podman is growing across the network and pulling down the latest SQL Server 2019 image. All of this is done in the context of the root user. You can see this in the command prompt that I have root at my host name to show that this command is run in the context of the root user. You'll notice now that there are two images available. One of them, the Apache image, and the other image is the SQL Server image. We're now going to run the SQL Server image. For that, let's use the podman run command, give it a name, the name of the container, give it the host name, which is renaming the host name for this particular container run, mapping uh, the local var ms SQL scripts folder previously created, which is on the host system, and also accepting the EULA agreement, passing in the SA password for SQL Server, and adding a bunch of different capabilities for this particular container run. We're also mapping the ports, in this case, mapping the local port 1400 to the SQL Server port 1433, and also giving it the name of the container that we pulled down. So let's run this particular command. You'll notice that this command has run, and again, it is run in the context of the root user. So to, to ensure that this command is indeed executed correctly, Let's use the podman ps command to take a look at the running container processes. So you can see that there is a container. It has a particular name uh, and it is created a few seconds ago. And this container can now be accessed. So as you can see on the screen, the podman logs command to basically inspect the logs that were created while the container was getting executed. So they take a look at the output of the podman logs command for this particular container, we'll see that SQL Server executed within the container is running in the context of a non-root user called MS SQL. Notice that we executed the container in the context of the root user. However, in SQL Server 2019, within the container, the user that is running SQL Server in the container is in the context of the MS SQL non-root user. So, now let's try to deploy this container in the context of a non-root user. And for this case, I've already created a user called rel. So I'm gonna SSH into the machine, again, the local host, as the rel user. So at the command prompt, you see that I am now logged in as the rel user. Let's run a similar command, which is podman run, but of, with a few changes to the parameters. In this case, giving it a new container name, MS SQL DB1, uh, a new host name, the same parameters for the EULA agreement and the SA password. Of course, you can rename the SA password if you want for the separate container run. 
we're also you know adding those capabilities back and uh, you can see that service binding mapping it to local port 1401 so there is no port clash with the earlier port of 1400 uh, and then giving it the container name so let's run this particular command in the context of the rel user so what you'll notice here is podman was looking for this particular container in its repository and it found that you know for the rel user this container it does not exist in the repository so it had to go across the network, fetch the container, pull it down to the local repo, and then run the containers. This command has completed, and uh, you can see that uh, let's run the podman ds command, and you'll see that this container has now successfully executed. One thing with podman uh, that you can do in the context of rel containers is you can run multiple containers. So in this case, you know, what I'm doing is we've already run one container in the context of the rel user. Uh, we're going to run another container. You'll notice compared to the previous step was it did not go across the network to fetch the container. And that's because it already found the container in the local repository in the context of the rel user and was able to take the container and launch that container with the new uh, parameter options that we have passed. So at this step, we should really have two containers running in the system. So let's verify that with the podman ps command. You'll see that now we have two containers. One started a few seconds ago, uh, another started uh, close to a minute ago. Next, what we will do is again, you know, just inspect our logs to verify that, you know, these containers have started. We'll look at the top two lines of the logs. So for that, let's run the podman logs command on uh, the MS SQL DB1 container. So let's do that. We'll see that in this case, the container was executed in the context of the rel user and SQL Server is running in the container in the context of uh, the MS SQL non-root user, which is great. Uh, let's do the same podman logs command for the other container, uh, the second container that was spun up. And you'll see a very similar log result here that SQL Server also started in this case uh, using the MS SQL non-root user and it was executed in the context of the rel user. To wrap this up, I just want to connect to one of the container and show you that you can really connect to this container. It's a live SQL Server instance running in this container, and you can execute some SQL queries. So for that, let's uh, run this podman exec uh, command. This is executing into uh, this particular container. This is, again, in the context of the root user, but you can clearly do this as a non-root user as well. So I'm going to run the podman exec command here. What we've got is a bash shell within, within the container. For those DBAs who are listening to this uh, demo, uh, you'll notice that we're using a very familiar SQL command, which is called SQL CMD to basically query SQL Server. So the command line options are pretty simple. You, you pass it the name of the server, the SA username and password, and then you pass in a query. In this case, the our query is fairly simple as well. We're just getting the name, the server name, as well as the version of SQL Server. And so if we run this particular query, you'll see that uh, the output kind of tells us that we, uh, it is connected to SQL Server. The name of the server is MS SQL Container 0, which maps to the command line uh, argument that we had passed when we ran this con container. And you can also see that the version number of SQL Server is SQL Server 2019 running on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.2. Let's keep it a little bit more interesting. Uh, if you remember, we had created a folder with a data file earlier. So let's try to even load that script and you know run some more interesting queries. In this case, uh, I'm going to tell SQL CMD to run a particular script file, uh, which I already created. And this particular script file is going to create an in-memory table and load, load the data. So let's try to do that. So it has connected to the database, changed the context of the database to memory OLTP uh, database, uh, and it has uh, inserted a bunch of new rows. So um, in this case, uh, our schema is very simple. Uh, we have a user session table and a shopping cart table. You know, from, from a user session point of view, one, one interesting query could be to count the sessions uh, that are existing in this user session table. So let's run a simple select count query uh, on the user session table and count the, uh, the session IDs. And in this case, uh, we have six session IDs which are part of this user session table. 
Let's also query the shopping cart table. And in this case, uh, one query could be just finding the user ID of the shopper who's purchased quite a bit of items and, the, and whose total price of these items add up to the highest value. So in this case, we are selecting uh, the top user ID from this shopping cart table, and we are ordering this table by total price. So effectively, we're gonna get the row as well, the user ID corresponding to the row where the total price is the highest in the shopping cart table. So let's run this particular query. And you'll see that this user ID is user ID 342. So hopefully that gave you an understanding of how you can run SQL Server within a container on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, as well as use common familiar tools like SQL CMD from a SQL developer perspective to connect to SQL, as well as run queries on your SQL database running within a container on RHEL. Thank you very much.